David. Name's Brandon. Brandon, how you doing? So, I think Adanda already told you I'm a messianic Jew. Yeah, yeah. I believe in Jesus. Yep. What, what, what's your theological belief? What would you do? I'm a Trinitarian, so I'm a Christian, yeah. So for me, um, I would want to understand why you believe in the Trinity. Mm -hmm. Do you know that Muhammad has slaves? Oh well, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's an Ibn Ishaq. Thank you. Thank you. In the Quran, uh, it, 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 it'll be in, 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 in the Sira. It, it'll be in the Sira. <laughs> so, yeah. Because um, for me, I believe that the when you when you say Messiah, Messiah just means anointed one, Mashiach. Mm -hmm. Mashiach just means to be anointed. Of right. course, the only things that Jesus is anointed for is king, prophet, priest. So I would want to see where we get the idea of him being God. For him. Read Luke, like in Luke chapter one, Gabriel comes to Mary and tells her that that uh, she'll have a son who'll be called Mighty God, Ever everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That's in the book of Luke, chapter one. Is it? Or, um, am I am I comparing some things? To, uh, in, in Luke one, she, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Gabriel tells Mary that the child will be called Emmanuel, which right. means that uh, like, like God with us, right? And then there is no better. Um, there's many. There's many times. Even in Zechariah, right? God is talking to Zechariah and refers to himself as coming to um, the, the, the uh, house of David and, and being pierced and things of that nature. So Jesus Christ appears to be the God that was spoken about in the Old Testament. Can we say the same thing about Moses then? How so? Because Moses, um, God said in Exodus 17... That I will make you. No, no, no. Yeah? In, in Exodus 17, Moses, Moses was, sorry, God said he will smite the water and turn it into blood. Yep. God said he will um, kill the first, sorry, God, I want to get the terms right. Yep. So he says, first of all, that he will, God will use, God said he will use, the Lord said he will use his staff and he will smite the water and it will turn to blood. God said that he will use his staff, he will, uh, uh, he will, he will smite the plagues upon Egypt. Yep. Another one would be the frogs. Also, the locusts. Yes. Like that. God said he will do this. And Moses But then Moses done it. Same thing with Zachariah. God said he will do this, but then we see Jesus doing it. Yep. Why wouldn't that be the same? So, effectively, yes, in analysis with Moses, what is happening there is that God is making declarations and they're being carried out by a prophet, right? But also, Moses himself doesn't say, I will do these things, right? He, he doesn't then affirm that the, that the um, actions that God said he would carry out, that he is doing all of himself. Moses never said that I, I divided the Red Sea, I called the king. But he does say, for example, that destroy this temple and I will raise it up again. But Jesus said, I will do, I do nothing of myself. Yes. So what that means is that that's him establishing parity, right? With the father in that everything the father, um, the father wills. I don't know how they can be smoking and believe that. That's him um, establishing parity with the father. Every, everything the father wills is kept. So as a Trinitarian, we hold that there is one being, what well, one God, um, who is the uh, like purveyor of all existence, but that he is three in persons. He is the Father, He is the Son, He is the Spirit. And, and what these, what these uh, three persons are, are essentially just realities of God. So the Father is a reality of God, in that God is the uncaused cause, so the Father is the uncaused cause, and He is different, or distinct, sorry, from the Son, in that the Son proceeds from the Father, so the Son has the feature of being begotten from the Father. And so that would make him not God then? Well, it would because by, by extension, unless you believe that something can be eternal, so have no beginning and have no end, and be here before creation, and be responsible for creation, then it has to be God. So that's why, because Christ is here before creation, he's responsible for creation as the word of God, that would therefore make him God, because he's eternal, has no creation points, and uh, made all reality. So, just to get it clear, yep. the same way in Zachariah, God said he's going to do something, yep. 
but then Jesus does it. Same way with Moses. Moses says, God, God says I'll, I'll do something and, and Moses, Moses carries out the action. So would you say that that is the same thing? I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't say it's the same concept because the difference here is that I'm already presupposing that Jesus Christ is God. But See, that's the problem. If you're already presupposing that Jesus is Based on his teachings and his actions, right? Like the whole thing about forgiving sins, the whole things about uh, about like raising the dead, about proclaiming that he will lay down his life and no one can take it from him. All of, uh, th 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 those words. Jesus said that he and actions. Jesus says he can raise the dead because he saw the Father raise the dead. Yeah, no, yeah. So, so, no, no, so, so, uh, so again, that's what as the Father does, so do I do, right? So effectively, every ability the Father possesses, the Son also has. In context, they don't even say but, every ability. But, but that's what it means, because even further, further beyond that, in John 16, 15, it, uh, Christ says that all that belongs to the Father is mine. Yeah, that's talking so, about the body. All. In context, it's talking about the body. The bo the, what, what body? His body. His body. Which is, which is the church and everything inside the church. That would include this world, because we live in this world. Okay. That would include the birds and the animals. So who, we have control of so who is Christ that he can own the entire world? He's the king of Israel. So the king of Israel owns the world? Yeah, David owned the world. In Psalms, what is that? Psalm 72, King Solomon made a prayer and said that the future kings of Israel, plural, will own the world, basically. But David is, David has already like passed at the stage. I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying it happened for David, happened for Solomon, and Solomon makes it clear in Psalm 72. Where does the Bible say that David or Solomon ruled the entire world? Because it says he sat on the throne of um, Solomon. It says that David sat on the throne of God. Yeah, so the throne of God is, is a, a station. It's right. in, in, in that the ruler of Israel is God, but the Israelites prayed for a human uh, a, a human uh, ruler. For the no, human no, no, ruler... See, we, we, we can't do that. That's equivocation fallacy. Because that was for so, that was for Saul. God instituted David, not the, not, not the Israelites. The Israelites never instituted David. No, God but David. they prayed for a human leader. Before that, they were led by, by, by the high priests. And they wanted a leader like, like the enemy nations did. And, and that's my point. Right? The, the David is not like the, the nation's king. Which is fine. But ultimately, even the king of Israel has to submit himself to the authority of God. So si agree, since the same throne... With, same with Jesus. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1 verses 8. It literally so, says that Jesus God. has a God. Yeah, Even but, in Revelation 1, but the, the God says to Jesus, Your throne, O Lord. No, he doesn't. That's what Hebrews 1 says. And, and, and even if it does say that, we've already agreed that David sat on God's throne. Right, but David sitting on God's throne means the following that ultimately the dominion of Israel is from God, but the representative of God on earth to lead the Israelites is the king of Israel. Was, did he not lead the nations as well? Who? Solomon? David, Solomon. He, he did, but he did not own all of reality. I think that the same thing, yeah, I think that's where we're, think that's where we're, we're confusing each other. Uh, David had control over the whole world, everything yeah. right. Where's the evidence that he ruled America, for example? Because he's the king of Israel. When okay. God institutes a king, that's the, that's, the same for, that's the same for Jesus then. Where does it explicitly say Jesus owned America? It doesn't say that. Right, so when it comes to David, right, we, we can say, so it doesn't say, so, with David, right, it talks about him owning or, or, or whatever, like sitting on the throne of God, right? But it even says that um, Nebuchadnezzar was king over all the world, right? But what that means in context isn't that he was king over every single piece of land on the planet. It was that he was king over a large area. I, I would agree Contextually. to some extent. Yes. I would agree to some extent, but I believe when God says you are king of kings, because that's what Nebuchadnezzar was called. He was called king of kings. That that just means you're a king that's above all kings. That sure. means above that means, yeah. that means yeah, that's okay. Sam, stop being annoying. Go away, Sam. You know what? Bye, Sam. 
Bye. Bye. You can. Bye. Ma, arrivederci. Arrivederci, Sam. Then I can use my martial arts skills, can't I? Well, sorry about that. No worries. I have to. I have. You know, I have to step in there, please. No worries. So um. Yes, I wanted to read this. Now. Yes, it says Psalm seventy-two. Right? Psalm seventy-two. Of Solomon, O God, give the king your judgment and your righteousness to the king's son. Right. May he render judgment to your people with righteousness and your afflicted and your afflicted with justice. Let the mountain lift up peace to the people and the hill hills in righteousness. May he give justice to the afflicted of the people, save the children of the needy, and crush the oppressor. Let them fear you while the sun endures, yep. and as long as the moon from from generation to all generation. May he become may he come down like rain upon the mew grass, like, like showers, like showers that water the earth. Okay. May the righteous flourish in his days and the abundance of peace until the moon it is is no more. Okay. May he also have dominion from sea to sea yep. and from river to the ends of the earth. Right. Let the desert preacher kneel before him mm -hmm. and he uh, and his enemies lick, lick the dust. dust. Yep. This is remember the enemies lick the dust of the feet. That's Revelation chapter two verse mm -hmm. nine. Revelation chapter three verses nine. Speaking about Christ and yep. the apostles and the followers of Christ. Right. So this Psalm uh, seventy two is specifically Solomon talking about the Messiah, right? And here, and this is the point I really wanted to read in verses eight. It says, "May he also have dominion, dominion from, from sea, sea to sea, sea yeah, from river to and river. from river to river. Uh, sorry, river to the ends of the earth." Okay. That's, oh, that's all of it. Okay. That's all of it. Right. So right. this it, this is not only for Jesus. Yes. This is also for anyone that comes after Solomon, and it also includes Solomon. Because the same promises, the same covenant that was given to David is given to all the sons of David. But we see a bit of a breakdown, no, of, of the authority of, uh, of Israel after Solomon. Like, like his, his sons after him don't do a great job of maintaining the kingdom and it divides in two. So I don't think he's talking about everybody. I think he's talking about particularly the Messiah. I believe it's talking about every righteous king of Israel that's from the line of David. For example, Hezekiah. Mm -hmm. Hezekiah, righteous king of Israel, that's why he prospered. Right. Uh, Josiah, even, uh, righteous king of Israel, he prospered. So I believe that those sure promises of David, according to Psalms 80, what is that, 89, actually happen to all righteous kings that are from the lineage of David. This is why Jesus, um, being a righteous king, being the ultimate fulfillment of this, can fit into this category too. So whether, sure, but when, in an even more grand scale, when he returns, uh, I, and, no, I believe and, he's and, got and, authority now. Even well, like the Book of Hebrews, he says will return. He has authority, yes. Even though we don't see. But he will, he will, you know, he will return with, 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 with like the, the sword uh, coming out of his mouth with, with, with his mighty armies, right? And then he, he, will, he will then judge and and, uh, and reign over over the uh, the earth, like in uh, the millennium reign or whatever you want to you call it, right? So, yes, certainly those things will be fulfilled in uh, in, in most um, clarity by Christ, the second coming. But if you're somebody who believes that Christ is not God and you only believe he's a righteous king. So is he a human being only? Yes. Does he have any, any sense of pre-existence? So like the whole like, before Abraham was, I am. No, that's actually talking about um, being Lord over Abraham. It's the, okay. same, it's the same kind of question when Jesus asks the Pharisees and Sadducees. Yep. Um, who do you say, who the, do you say the, the, the son of David, David is? Yeah. How, how, can, how can the Messiah be, be the son? son when David called, uh, called uh, the Messiah Lord? Lord. Like yep. Adonai. Yep. Well, in Acts 2, Peter actually breaks it down. Uh -huh. The way that David can call Jesus La Adonai, but still be his son, is because Jesus was made both Lord and Christ over David because of the resurrection of the dead. You read that simply in um, Acts chapter two, I think it's verses 37. So that would be the same thing for um, John chapter eight, verses 58. Because when you read the context, every statement that Jesus makes to the Pharisees and Sadducees at that point is, if you keep my words, you won't taste death, guys. So he's speaking about the resurrection in that context. Right, but then obviously the, the same John also talks about in the very, very beginning about the word becoming flesh. Right. right. So if the word, and it makes a very clear distinction that John is not the one being spoken about as the words. Right. Right. So this word that was with God, that who without nothing would have
But yeah, so then then this is what I would ask as well yep. then. Okay, with that statement being said, mm -hmm. I would actually ask you about fir uh, First Corinthians chapter two verses eleven. I'm gonna read it real quick. Yeah, bring it out as a sign. And because remember, was you, you basically said that we have the Father that's a, that's a distinct person. Yep. Uh, or hypothesis. Distinct, yep. Distinct person. Yep. Uh, and this, the Holy Spirit is yeah. the person. So that would be in their respected hypostasism as well. Yep. So then in 1 Corinthians 2, yep. why does why does Paul yep. actually say they're not distinct? And I will read it. In what sense? Um, well, well, let's read it. Because they're, they're distinct two, in, in like feature, for example. Right. So in in, in 1 Corinthians yep. chapter 2, 11, verses yep. 11, yep. it says, For whom who among men knows the depths of a man yep. except the spirit of that man which is in him? Okay. So it's a question. The same way you have a soul, how can I know your thoughts unless I have your soul? That's the question he's asking. Um, it, it's like who knows a man better than himself is, is what I'm gathering from that. Right, because you have your spirit. This is why he meant, look, he okay. literally mentions it. For who among men knows the depths of a man except the spirit of that man? Okay. So it's talking about his soul. The way you have a soul. So who knows a man better than himself? Soul. Okay, sure. Only your soul knows you. Okay. Only my soul knows myself. Sure, okay. So Paul makes that distinction here and then applies that to God. Okay. So look what he, look how he applies it to yep. God. So I'll read it one more time. For who among men knows the depths of a man except the spirit of that man which is in him? Yep. Even so, the depths of God, no one except the spirit of God comprehends. Okay. So the same way man has a spirit and only man's spirit in that individual can understand the thoughts of that particular man is the same way God has a spirit and God's spirit is the only thing that can within itself discern things deep in God. This okay. means it can't be a distinct person. It would have, just like you wouldn't say your spirit is a distinct person. So again, the person who the hypostasis is the feature that God, or the three, the feature that God has. We are not exactly like God in that we are also three in one, that we have three hypostasis, right? So that would mean that when that is being described, it should be described in the lens that there are also two additional hypostasis along with the spirits. So that doesn't mean that God is only one person, because God isn't only like God the spirits, right? No. I don't really yeah, so God, God is a spirit, but also has a spirit. God is spirit. I but mean, also has a spirit, right? Yeah. Where does the Be Bible say that? Because God is a spirit, right? Uh -huh. And we worship Him in the spirit and truth. Uh -huh. But then the spirit of God uh -huh. knows God. So God knows Himself. Yeah, God knows Himself. So God is a spirit, we're spirits. God, no, God knows Himself. God is spirit, so He knows Himself. And that's okay. why I'm, it's, it's, it's like you. Are you, are you, are you, what are you? Are you A soul? bunch of things. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a composite being. Are you soul? Uh, I, I have a soul, sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm saying, are you a soul? Because your soul is the thing. A, that, a living soul, sure. Your, your soul is the thing that controls your body, correct? It, it, it animates your body, right? right. It, it, so it, it, so it, it lets you be alive, right? So it controls your body. Um, I, uh, I mean... Because if you didn't have the soul, if you didn't have the soul, have the soul sure, your body wouldn't be moving, you wouldn't yeah, be Yeah, moving, and that's what I mean by, by animating. You wouldn't be growing. Yeah. Okay. So, th that's my point. Okay. And I think this is what Paul's doing. He okay. the same way a man has a spirit, the same way God had, quote unquote has a spirit. Obviously there is no actual, uh, God God can't be compared to anything anyway. Sure. But, God, but what Paul's trying to do here is give you an understanding that we can use, which is your spirit. I can say your spirit. This is why the Bible says, they that are born of spirit are spirit, yep. they that are born of the flesh are flesh. Yep. Because if you let your flesh uh, uh, like uh, lead, lead you, you, you chase all these things and, uh, and ignore exactly. the things of God. Yeah. If you let your if you let your flesh control your spirit, mm -hmm. then your flesh you'll be condemned. Yep. But if you let your soul control your flesh, then you won't be condemned. Mm -hmm. Very simple. So this is the same thing with God. This is why Paul explicitly uses this idea to demonstrate God and His Spirit are not distinct persons. You can only know God if you have been granted the the. If you've been granted the uh, what they call the gift of the Holy Spirit, yeah, there's, and, there's grace and there's fruits, which is yeah. Him. This is why in First Corinthians chapter three verse sixteen it says, "Do you not know that you are the temple of God? That okay. God dwells in you, not that, but not that the Holy Spirit dwells in you, not that, not that the Son dwells in you, but that the Father dwells in you. Why? Because Christ says in John seventeen, 
chapter. Can you pull that out, please? Yes. Please, we'll let, let, let me let John me let me go that, please, if you don't mind. John said, I'll, I'll just read this as well. Yeah, because John 17. Before that, in 16, he said that he would send the Holy Spirit to, to dwell, dwell, dwell with them. Right, and I, I so, have a different understanding on that. Remember, I believe okay. that he's the Holy Spirit is not a distinct person. Remember right. I said that? So, when it says, Jesus speaks in parables in it, right? Okay. So, when, when he says the Holy Spirit will come, he's speaking about the Father. And I will demonstrate that. You, you may look at me now and say, oh... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't agree because I, I hold to the idea of, of all, all three persons having like a distinct hypostasis, right? Right. And it is not the role of the Father to come and dwell amongst us. Well, that's what Jesus Christ says. So, okay. do you believe Jesus had the indwelling of the Father? Because like, think about it, right? So, he, he, he says like, because I am God... So, this is like John 14, 12, right? Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father, right? So, on the one hand, he's going to the Father, and then later he will talk about... Uh, go, 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 to, go a bit further up. Up, you said? Yeah. Okay. It may just spoke about works. It said that we're going to do greater works when Jesus goes to the Father, right? Yes. If you read from verses... Where is that? I can read the whole 14 if you want. No, you don't need to read the whole of it. I want to get we, we, we got time, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go, okay, let's read it. I really want to deal with what Philip said and what Jesus said to The Philip. whole thing, yeah? Yeah, we just might as well. Okay, fine. So, John 14, 1. Uh, right. Jesus is talking. He says, Let none of your hearts be troubled. Right. Believe in God, believe in me also. Right. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. Right. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself. Second coming, right? Uh, that where I am, you may also be. And you know the way uh, to where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, yeah, you would have known my Father also. Right. So there's like a distinction here between the Father and, and, and the Son. Uh, for now, but from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. Right. Um, <clears throat> and if it is enough for us, uh, Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long and right. you still do not know me, Philip? Right. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Right. How, can, how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? So this is the key point. Okay. Don't you believe I am in the Father and the Father in me? Yep. Right? So keep, keep on reading the okay. next part. Do you know that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does, uh, does his works, right? So fa the Father that yep. dwells in Jesus does the works. Okay. So when we read that, that scripture about Jesus going back to the Father yep. and we will do better works, yep. we're doing better works because the Father is in us. But that's not what it says later. Because the, a distinct person is, is talked about, the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit. Oh, we're right? going to get to and, that. We're going to get to that. If, the, if the Father is in him and he is in the Father, right. then there is no point in returning to the Father. So let me ask you this. Right? How did Jesus do the works? So the is it through the Holy Spirit or the Father? So the, it, the it says here that, that that the works were done to the Father, and we will take okay. that as the will of the Father. So as as Trinitarians, it says the works. I won't say works. No, 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 no. The will of the Father allows the works to be done. As Trinitarians, we make the argument that the Father wills something, mm -hmm. and then that will is carried out by the Son. Say, for example, in creation, the Father wills for creation to occur. And then uh, the father's hypostasis involves him willing things into being. Mm -hmm. And for the son, that involves then actioning the will uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Which is why all three of them seem to be mentioned in the, in the Genesis text. Uh -huh. Talking about like, like the, the spirit of God hovering over the water. So where was so, Jesus? Huh? You said Jesus was mentioned. Well, well, well not, not Jesus per se. But the idea of, of God carrying out the works of creation and the spirit being involved. That would have been so the son. This is where it's getting a bit, because Psalms, Psalms, Psalms 36 yep. specifically says God more, merely spoke and it came to be. Well, uh, but not, it, that, it, not that, it, not that, sorry, not that God commanded through yeah. Shiliach. Okay. Shiliach is, uh, is a Jewish way of saying uh, 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 so God gives the authority and then that person carries right. it out. You've so also got to remember that Jesus said whatever the Father can do, I can likewise also do. Right. So in context, although the Father might be doing that work there, them himself, 
Jesus Christ can likewise do exactly the same work. In, in that context of Matthew 5? No, he, he didn't say that. No, no God, not in Jesus, that context. Je, you know, in context of Matthew 5? Context, real quick, real quick. Just say, in context of Matthew 5, which you just spoken about, he's specifically talking about the death, burial, and resurrection. He says the same way that Jesus, the same way that I was risen from the dead. He's speaking in, you know, he's speaking as it's already happened, of course. That's something that Jews do. But um, he's saying that to say the same way I was resurrected by the Father, the Father has given power within myself so I can resurrect people too. This is why later in Matthew you can read that Jesus will come back and he will rise there, there the dead with the trumpet. We can do that we, we, we can bring that out and read that because that's an interesting concept you have there, but we can go, we can go to that. Yeah. So, um, where was it? So the Father is so, the one that's doing the work. So I do not speak my own, on my own authority, but right. the Father who dwells in me does this work. Right. Believe me that I am, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else, believe on account of the works themselves. So believe what the Father's doing. Go ahead. Well, well believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. So there's, there's a pa parity here. They're, so they're, they're both sharing the same divine essence. So watch this. how we'll take this. So, so watch this. I am in the Father and the Father in me. Remember, the question was, we haven't seen the Father. Show us the Father. Right. And he says, have I not been with you for so long? Right. Then he says, do you not know that I and the Father are one? Yes. yes. Then he says, yes. If you don't believe in me, believe in the works. The works, works. yep. So the way that the Father and Jesus are one are because of the works that they're doing. Well, not not only the works that, that they're yeah. doing, but the works I'm are one the of the scripture. The in works the scripture. are one of the showcases, yeah, I'm saying right? In the scripture. Yeah. The works we are. Add, we can't add to the. What the we're, scripture we're not adding to what you just said, but we're, we're using different like hermeneutics, like we're some inter interpreting, right? They are not only the same because of their works, right? Because they don't actually always do the exact same works, right? For example, the Father isn't isn't here being crucified. That was the Son. But I, but see, that, that's a that's a bad point because actually do believe the father was quote unquote crucified not in the physical sense the same this is why Zachariah can say that happened to the father or to yod -Heh -Vav -Heh, but we see Jesus do it when I say that is when you deal with Jewish writing there's always two understandings maybe three maybe four I don't know anything and about Jewish writing so I'll, I'll I can't you, confirm that for you when it talks about piercing Right, it, it's, it's like In Zechariah uh, 12, I think it, 14. Right, it's Zechariah 12 and 14, 13. So it, I'll give an example. In Exodus uh, 17, I think it's 7, it talks about Mishnah Torah, which is by Rambam. He speaks about how um, during Moses' time, it was said not to tempt God. But then Mishnah Torah says that the only way you tempt God is by tempting the prophet. What the hell does he mean? Tempting the prophet is how you tempt That isn't the only way you send God. I, I'm not, I, I, obviously I agree with that, but in this case I'm talking about. In this case. So this is the interpretation so, of so, a 12th century so, so, rabbi. Well, we could say that, but it's a correct interpretation because we can see it panning out in the Bible itself. Well, this is actually what happened in the Bible. We can People see... started rejecting Moses, and because they rejected Moses, they ultimately rejected God. And that's the point that Rambam was bringing out. Don't test God the same way you test him in, I think the name was Rama, if I'm not mistake, mistaken. And the way that they tested God in Rama is because they tested Moses. So it's the same thing with Zachariah. Zachariah says Yod -Heh -Vav -Heh would be pierced, and we see that Jesus was pierced. So it's, it's actually, it's like when Jesus says, um, this was to be fulfilled, so you hated me without a cause. Jesus is speaking about himself, he's speaking about the Father. Okay. You hated me without a cause. But I don't we're, agree. We're shifting, I don't right. agree with, with that Rambam interpretation okay. because I mean, you, there were instances, for example, where in the in the in the wilderness, the children of Israel started to look like uh, like um, just openly curse at the idea that they were um, in the wilderness and they were hungry and that they wish they were still uh, they still were slaves in Egypt. At least by then, they had okay. foods and jobs, right? right? In that instance, they, they, they weren't quite tempting Moses, but they were speaking openly against God. They were tempting Moses. They were speaking, How so? They were speaking openly against Moses, and they was acting openly against Moses. Moses said, "Don't what? Don't worship idols. What the hell are they going to do? They're going to worship an idol well, what, against God's." Wait a second. Against Moses. The first time they did it, the law wasn't there. Yeah, it was. It wasn't. It, no, it was. Moses came down with the law and smashed it the first time. No, he with a calf. No, no. Yes. You see, and this is and and see, this is where it, it, this is where it gets a bit. But backwards, okay. because you're telling me that they made a covenant 
and they never broke the covenant by worshipping the golden calf? So, <laughs> when it came to the law, right, no, no, just, which just includes... The was they given a covenant and did God when... Because remember, before even Moses got down there, God yep. said that they've already broke my covenant. Correct? You want to bring it out? Can we read that part as well? I want to finish but, here. Okay, first. fine. But, but so, so, so bring it out and then we can read it, we read that again. Let's finish this first. Though. Because I mean, we're like. Going, we're going to so many places. Okay, that, that's fine. Thing. So, we were stop, stop referring in, to no, that's, that's fine. That's fine. In, in, in John 14, the right. Father is in Jesus and Jesus is in, in the Father, right? right. And uh, he's saying only through words. I, I'm, I'm saying that they share the same essence. Go ahead. So, uh, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will you do because I am going to the Father. Right. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Right. And, and then here's the part that I wanted to get to. Um, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Right. And I will ask my Father, and he will give you another helper. Right. So, we have the Father, the Son, and another helper being mentioned here. Right. Okay. He will give you another helper to be with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him right. you know him for he dwells with you and will be uh, in you so that's kind of like what I was trying to like get across here right. we have three different persons being talked about we have the father we have the son speaking and then we have the spirits and these are all playing a role in guiding the disciples okay so let's read now John 16 speaking about the same thing okay it says John 16 and verses 12 I still have many more things to say to you yep. but you cannot bear them now but when he the spirit of truth comes yep he will guide you into all truth. Yep. So who's going to guide us into all the truth? Spirit of truth? The spirit of truth. Yep. Okay. For he will not speak for himself. Yep. But whatever he hears, he will speak. Yep. And he will disclose it to you. Yep. What is to come? So who's disclosing it to you? The Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth. Yes. The spirit of truth. Okay. Verses fourteen. Yep. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and and will disclose it to you. Yep. All things that the Father has are mine. Yep. Therefore, I said that He will take of what's mine and will disclose it to you. Is that, yep. is that still the Spirit? Yeah, Spirit. Yeah, probably. So, why does Jesus say it's the Father? Which one? Sorry. Verses fifteen. Yep. So and verses all, 15, all things, all things that are the, uh, sorry, all things right. that the Father has are mine. Right. Therefore, I said that He takes of mine and He discloses it to you. Okay. Who takes of His? So the Father, now He says, take of His and oh. discloses it to you. I thought it was the Holy Spirit. So no, so I, I thought you mentioned the Holy Spirit beforehand. No, 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 I did. Okay. He, so he, um, wait, wait. And hold on, real quick. Let's read it again. And this is reading yes. comprehension. No, that's fine. Let's this read it again. This is reading comprehension. Look. So verses twelve. Verses 13 says that it's the spirit of truth that reveals all things. Okay. Right? Let's read it again. So, I still have many things, no, many you, more things to say to you, you but now. you cannot bear them now. Okay. But when he, the spirit of so truth, comes, the spirit of truth yeah. he will guide you into all truth. All right. For he will not speak for himself, yep. but whoever he hear, whatever he hears, sorry, yep. he will speak uh, and he will disclose it to you okay what is to what is to well, come? What is to come? Go ahead. so there's going to be a spirit of truth that's going to come right and not speak of himself but only of what he hears right okay okay then it says he will glorify me yep. for he will take of what is mine yep. and i will and will disclose it to you okay so the holy spirit's doing this will take of what, is, of, what, of what is christ and disclose it to the disciples okay. yes right the okay spirit of truth is yep. doing this verses 14 now yep. says all, all things that the, that the father, father has are mine, mine therefore, therefore i said he uh, he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. Who's doing that? The Ooh, father. That's an interesting one. That's an interesting one. The father does it. Uh, I'm not sure. Now he says, I, I, I look at it, but the he could uh, be the spirit. Uh, and you know, the he could be the spirit. Yeah. And I would say it is the spirit of truth. Okay. Because the father is the spirit of the truth. No, the so why, it's look, not. Look, 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 look. The reason why I say that, look, and this is, this is why I say simple reading comprehension. Look who it has here. It says, all things that the Father has are mine, semicolon. Yep. Therefore, I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. So the Holy Spirit discloses things, but here it says the Father is doing it. Do you know why I pointed out the semicolon? Because the semicolon is a grammatical mark that shows two independent clauses having the same meaning. So when we see the Father is doing this, and it has a semicolon after that, 
then explains that he's going to disclose this, this means that exactly what it means, the father is going to disclose it. Well, that, that becomes contradictory because then there will, it will be no sense in him returning to the father to, to send the father. Oh, I just put my nose. Just, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. It, it would make no sense for, um, for him to send the father mm -hmm. who would not speak of his own authority but only of the father's authority to the disciples to then dwell in them. Because there are three distinct persons being spoken about. The spirit, the, the spirit who will receive the things uh, from Christ that are spoken of by the Father and, and uh, departed to the disciples. And then Christ cannot, um, cannot stay with them for long because for the Spirit to come, He has to leave. And where is He leaving to? Back to the Father. Right. So if, if you then conflate the Father for the Spirit, you then have this weird instance where the Father is, um, is coming in place of Christ and He is also sending Himself because He says that the Father will send the Spirit um, uh, uh, to, to the disciples. The Father is now sending Himself, not speaking of His own authority, but of the authority of the Father. And He is now dwelling with the disciples and it becomes a bit weird in that instance. See, and this is what Jesus Christ is telling us. He's telling us that we will have the Holy Spirit. This is why it can say, He will not speak of His own authority. Because I won't speak of my own authority if I have the Holy Spirit. Neither would you. But it's the Father you're saying, right? So the Father will not speak of His own authority. I'm saying that Jesus is speaking about the dispensation of the Spirit, meaning when the Spirit is in us, we won't speak of our own authority, we will only speak what the Father says because the Father is in us. But it doesn't say you will, it says, it says, it says uh, He will, and, implying and is, it's a singular individual. And the thing is, it, in, in early translations of the Bible in those particular places, it actually doesn't say He, it says It. Again, it, it, still, still could be the, it still would be the Spirit, right? Because that, I, that, I could, I think that, could, be, no, that, could, that could be showcasing, I'm right? Saying, that it's, it's something that's I'm unknown. To you. Remember, remember, he's having... You wouldn't call the Father an it. For example, he, in John chapter 14, John chapter 16, John chapter 17, mm -hmm. John chapter 18, John cha even all the way to John chapter 20, Jesus is specifically speaking to Philip and, uh, and Thomas, specifically. Where is where is Thomas and where is, Dulles and where, Can I just ask a quick question? Yeah, where is the Spirit when Jesus is speaking to them? The Spirit is in him. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And that's why he says, "Me and exactly. the Father are one." The Spirit is in Jesus. That's why exactly. he says, that's "The why Spirit is in him." So if Jesus he then departs, if Father, Jesus then departs, who's still got the Spirit? Jesus. So who has to send the Spirit if Jesus has got the Spirit? I mean. I don't see where you're going there, but... Well, that's what it's saying I, in... Um, that's what it's... That's I'll, what I'll you've like just read. Hmm? That's like what you've just read. Jesus is speaking to the disciples. So he's saying, when the, when the Holy Spirit is in you, disciples, this is why he can say he. He won't speak on his own authority. He won't do this. For example, Peter. Peter had the Holy Spirit. And... Um, uh, and the, the two, the, the wife, we were speaking about earlier, the wife and the husband, they brought unjust gain to Peter. Peter then said... Was it Peter or Paul? It was Peter. Peter? Yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure it was Peter. I think it was Paul. If it was Paul, then it was yeah, Paul. It was Paul. It's, the, it's the same it's, it's concept. It's an act. It's an act, yeah. It's the same concept. So, Paul can say, you have not lied to me, but you have lied to the Father. Well, to God. Even, to God no, right, Father. well, to God. Even though, he's the one that has the Holy Spirit inside him. You see, you see the point? I, I don't. Maybe I'm not articulating it's, myself. So, properly. so in that instance, right? It's it, it's uh, is equivocating um, the spirit with God, right? Is that yours? No. Okay. <laughs> no. In that instance, it, it's equivocating the spirit with God, right? Which essentially like feeds God into is the. Spirit. No. That. No, 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 no. God is spirit, right? But the spirit of God is a distinct person of God. That, that, okay, that's cool. how come we so can. Let me ask you this. Yep. In Matthew 1 18, in Luke chapter 1, verses 35. Do you want to bring them out so we can read them? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get Matthew 1 18. Yeah, that's, Actually, that's we'll, the, that's we'll do that. We'll do that in a second. So I'll get Matthew, you get, get Luke. That's right, where right, the right. Visit, the spirit visit Mary, the teller of a child. Luke 1 35. Okay, cool. okay, I want you to read that one. So, Matthew, Matthew 1. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place uh, in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child right. from the Holy Spirit. Okay, so is Jesus the son of the Holy Spirit or is he the son of the Father? Right, so this is I, 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 I was telling you, right? 
the incarnation is willed by the Father, carried out by the Son, and the power of the Spirit. So the Spirit is the power by which uh, Mary is, is impregnated with, 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 uh, with the... That was, that was my, question. my question was, is Jesus the Son? So the father, he's, the son, the son? he's the Son of the Father, okay. not the Spirit, right? Okay. So but, when, it, when it says in Matthew 1.18, yep. She was impregnated by the Holy Spirit, right. by the power of the Spirit, yes, that's, that's okay. what we take.